very pleased that I, I was asked to participate in this program. I think it is very important. It recognizes the fact that um, we are at a difficult place as Democrats in Alabama. Um, but the good news is, I think, we have no place to go but up. <laughs> and we should start that process as soon as possible. Um, the last thing I would say is that I am pleased to be in a room full of Democrats. Um, all of you, regardless of... Uh, regardless of uh, race, uh, sexual preference, or religion, are my brothers and sisters. <laughs> okay, well let's get down to business. Um, in 1964, when President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act, um, he made a comment to his press secretary that by signing that piece of legislation, that landmark piece of legislation, he gave the South to the Republicans for a generation. Um, it's now been two generations and we're still counting. Um, I like that story because it makes me feel good to know that I traded some modicum of political power uh, in exchange for the Voting Rights Act. That was worth it. I'll do that trade right now. I don't know if any of that's true, but the truth is that we find ourselves increasingly a minority party in the South, particularly in Alabama, to the point where we suffered a thrashing um, in the last election. Just to look at what's happened since LBJ signed the Voting Rights Act. The Congress that passed the 1964 Voting Rights Act, the 11 southern states of the old Confederacy had a total of 128 senators and representatives. 89% of them were Democrats. The Congress that sits in Washington right now those same southern states have 155 senators and representatives, and only 24 of them are Democrats. Um, it's gone from 89% Democratic representation in Congress to 15%. The first question I want to pose to our panel, I think, is uh, this is a little bit like an Irish wake. Okay? We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how much we really like the guy. Maybe what caused his demise. And then we're going to try to focus on how we celebrate going forward. But starting with this question, um, in the 2010 midterm elections, we lost every single statewide race in Alabama. Most of them overwhelmingly most of them by a margin of 60 to 40. Um, qualified, capable, competent Democrats lost to incompetent, <laughs> uncapable Republicans. And I'm not just talking about the Supreme Court. <laughs> we lost control of the legislature for the first time since Reconstruction and is now controlled by the Republicans. In addition, we lost a congressional seat in North Alabama that had never been occupied by a Republican since Reconstruction. In Jefferson County, which is usually consistently, solidly a Democratic county, Republicans won three of the six circuit judgeships. What I want to ask our panelists and start that discussion is, what the hell happened? <laughs> and, and what can we explain that with? You want to start that off for us, Representative? Thank you. Can I first start by uh, just commending the organizers with having all of us on the panel together. I don't know about you, but just for me in the eight years that I've served, almost nine years as an elected Democrat, I haven't really seen this panel of folks put together in one room so we can really talk about uh, what we need to be doing as Democrats. So I just want to commend you for that first and foremost. Now, from the legislative perspective, um, what do I feel happened? Uh, one of the things that we talked about, we meaning the, uh, and I can talk specifically about the House of Representatives. The Democratic Caucus went back and forth about should we have um, a single message put out to the public um, for Democrats. There were those of us like me who felt like we should, but. Uh, the larger folks uh, won out and said, no, uh, what may work in your district, Representative Coleman, may not work in my district. 
So we went against, um, and we got beat because the Republicans had a single message throughout the state of Alabama. I don't care where you were from or what office you were running for, it was Democrats have been in control for 136 years, give us a chance. And, I, and I'm paraphrasing what they were saying. But we never defined who we are as Democrats. Um, I teach political science, and I ask my students, who are African American students, what does the Democratic Party stand for? And they really couldn't tell me what issues we stand for. But they knew exactly what the Republican Party stood for. So we've got to do a better part. I feel like we didn't do a, a good enough job of messaging of who we are as a party. Now maybe, I know at one time there was a big issue, this was a few years ago. What's the time? Remember elected official with a microphone, how much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the time yeah. we, um, there was a, a, the NRA had a bill out some years ago, um, I called it the shoot to kill bill. And uh, lots of Democrats, actually there was a Democrat who uh, moved the bill forward, supported it, and it changed the way in which um, um, uh, um, if someone came into your house and uh, before we were supposed to have to retreat, this bill said that if you felt threatened, if you even said you were threatened, you had the opportunity to shoot that person. The bill itself um, went forward to define property as your home, your tent, your, you know, your car, all kinds of things. Now in my district, that bill didn't work well. Um, somebody else's district, it may have. You may have needed to support that bill. But things such as removing sales tax from food, that was an issue that we could have talked about across the board as Democrats. We should have just come up with one, two, three issues or something that we stand for, accomplishments throughout the years, because we've done a lot. But we never told them who we are. We never talked about what we've accomplished. We were just really trying to, oh, we have video. I was going to um, use the A word. We were trying to save our butts. <laughs> <laughs> Districts. And we did everything we could, and I'm talking collectively now as Democrats, to stay away and be, uh, from being connected with President Obama. As successful as this president has been in certain areas, um, certain Democrats, and I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, for me, I need to do this. And when I came in the door, I said, I, I, I don't, I just got to do that. The elephant in the room with the Democratic Party is race. It, it's a big issue. And uh, white Democrats did not wanna be aligned with that president. Um, we heard it over and over again uh, in private settings. How is this video gonna be used? <laughs> 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 Don't answer all my questions with the first one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm sorry. We'll, 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 get, with the microphone. we'll get back to that. Element.